name is Tepiso. Can you please help me with this question one point? So it says to us here, um, a rectangular box has dimensions A, B, and C. Right, let's go down further so that you can see what we're talking about. We can see there's a dimension at the bottom there. The length of this is actually A, right at the bottom is actually A. Okay, cool. So a rectangular box has dimensions A, B, and C. The area of the surfaces, um, 2 root 10, 3 root 2, and 6 root 5, as shown in the diagram. So the values that you guys are seeing there, these values, this is the area of the top part. This is the area of the top rectangular piece. This one is another area of the other face of this rectangular uh, prism, right? This is actually 6 root 5, it's also area. And the last area is this one. This is also area of the sides, the side here, the area 3 root 2. So the values that you are seeing there that are given to us are all areas. Not lengths, but the areas. Okay, cool. Without using a calculator, we don't have to use a calculator. Without using a calculator, find the volume, right, of the rectangular box. Find the volume of the rectangular box. Right, now, if I have to find the volume, I need to remember what is the formula for working out the volume. So, by uh, our knowledge of working out the volume, formula for calculating the volume of a rectangular prism is always length multiplied by the breadth multiplied by the height. It is always area of base multiplied by height. So, I need to know the length of this thing. I need to know its breadth or width. I also need to know its height. When I know these values, I can then be able to work out this volume. According to the information that was given to us, we can clearly see that the length is actually A. So I need A multiplied by the breadth. There is B. So that's B multiplied by the height of this, which is actually C. So I need to really work out the value of A, the value of B, and the value of C. When I know all those three, then I can be able to calculate the volume of this very awesome Rectangular prism. Absolutely interesting question, guys. Very, very nice. Let's see. Okay. So now, the first thing that I need you to look at and appreciate, <coughs> excuse me for that, is the area of the top part. The top part that you're looking at, right there at the top, it is actually the length multiplied by the breadth. The distance going sideways, the length, this one, is actually A units, and the breadth going to the right-hand side is actually B. So this region there is A multiplied by B. That area, right, it is A times B, and it has been given to us as 2 square root of 10. That's the first part I want you to look at. The second part is the face that you're currently looking at, the front face, this one, that you're looking at right in front here. The area of that face is A multiplied by C. So it means that A multiplied by C is equal to 6 square root 5. So it's equal to 6 square root 5. The last one is the one on the sides. This one on the sides. The sides. This one on the sides. The dimensions there are B as well as C. So that area of 3 root 2 is when you multiply B and C. So B multiplied by C is actually equal to 3 times the square root of 2. 2 root 10, 6 root 5, and 3 root 2. Right. Now, we are now sitting with three equations and three unknowns. This is good news. It means we can be able to apply simultaneous to try and find out what is A, what is B, and what is C, so that we can then plug them back on the formula for volume, and then you've got your answer. Remember, one unknown can be solved if you have one equation. Two unknowns can be solved if you have got two equations. So in this case, I'm fortunate. I need to find three unknowns, which is very exciting. So I needed how many? Three equations. So you can solve, solve them in any way, guys, that actually interests you. I'm going to start and make a the subject to the formula first because it is the first letter. Okay, cool. Let's see what will happen. Right. Now, if you check here, the very first equation that I have, this first equation, I can make A the subject to the formula. It's going to say A equals to 2 square root of 10 divided by B. That will be my first equation, right? This will be my first equation. If I come back here, I can also make A the subject to the formula and say A is equals to 6 square root 5 divided by C. That will be my second equation, right? Now, since both equation 1 and equation 2 have A as the subject to the formula, I can then equate them and say, well, equation 1 equals to equation 2. You then have 2 square root of 10 divided by B equals to 6 square root of 5 divided by C. Then I have to make one of them the subject of the formula in order to have a new equation. So, cross multiplication, 
this times that is going to be b multiplied by 6 square root of 5 equals to 2 root 10 times 6 will just be 2 root of 10 multiplied by c. Divide both sides by 6 root 5. So b is going to be 2 root of 10 times c divided by 6, the square root of 5. All right. Let's simplify this further, guys. Now, what is root 10? Well, we know from grade 11 that the square root of a times b can be written as the square root of a multiplied by the square root of b. So why am I raising this? Well, I want to break the 10. What am I going to call? Well, 10 is just simply going to be 2 times the square root of 5 multiplied by 2, right? Times c divided by 6 times the square root of 5. Remember, no calculator. Now, I can then split that square root and have 2 root 5 times root 2, right, times c divided by 6 root 5. Awesome stuff. Now, b will simply be, let's check what will happen here. This root 5 will divide root 5 off, and then 2 goes once here, and then it goes 3 times here. What do I end up with? Well, I end up with root 2 divided by 3 times c. And this will be my new equation, which I'm going to call equation 3. All right, now, if we go back, right at the back, at the top, right at the back, there we have got an expression or an equation, in this case, not expression, the equation that involves b and c, which says b times c is 3 root 2. Let's take that. Let's take that. We have got b times c is uh, 3 root 2. Very important for us to keep that in mind, guys. It is equal to 3 root 2. Okay, cool. So if I take that, I'm going to try and substitute this wherever I see b there. Let me put it here so that you guys can see what is going on. 3 square root of 2. Now I'm going to replace my b here. I'm going to replace my b with this business that we have over there. Okay, which is going to give us the square root of 2 divided by 3c, right, multiplied by what? Well, multiplied by c is 3 root 2, All right? So if you multiply here to try and simplify, c times c will just give you c squared. You've got root 2 over 3, c squared equals to 3 square root 2. Cross multiplication, guys, basic mathematics. Let's multiply by 3 on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. We are just going to sit with root 2. C squared equals to 3 times 3, which is 9 times the square root of 2. Divide everyone by square root of 2 over 2. Over 2, that is gone. Then you end up with C squared is 9. And if you take the square root on both sides, your C is just going to come out as exactly 3, which is what you get when you put the square root on the left and the square root on the right hand side. But then we just found C. Remember, we need to find both A and B as well, in addition to what we have already found, which is the value of, of C. Now, just go back and substitute anything that you have that is a relationship between B as well as C. Right. Now, if you go back again, I'm going to use this one. Let's go and see. I want to use this one here that we have here. I want to use BC equals to uh, 3 root 2. BC equals to 3 root 2. Okay, cool. Th we have that BC equals to 3 root 2. You've got the value of C. So this is B times 3 equals to 3 root 2. If you divide both sides by 3, then your solution for B will just simply be the square root of 2. Absolutely awesome stuff. Very, very interesting. Cool. Now, the last thing I need to get is A. I've got C. I've got B. I now need to find the value of A. Let's go back at the top and see what A is. Is there anything that involves A and B or A and C? I'm going to take this one, guys, here. AC is 6 root 5. AC is 6 root 5. Let's go back there. AC, right, we know that AC is 6 root 5. Okay, cool. C is 3. That means A times 3 is... 6 root 5. Divide both sides by 3. Over 3, over 3, then that's gone. Your A comes out as 6 over 3, which is 2, so you're sitting with 2 square root of 5. Therefore, your A is 2 root 5, your B is root 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's root 2, and your C value is actually equal to 3. Now I've got all the soldiers that I need to work out. The volume, all right, then the volume of this is just simply going to become the square root of 5, 2 square root 5 multiplied by the square root of 2 multiplied by 3, which will give you something very exciting. What is 2 times 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to have 6 times root 5 times root 2, which, like I said, root 5 and root 2 can be written as 1 square root of 5 multiplied by 2. And then this will simply become 6 by the square root of 10 
cubic units because volume is always expressed in cubic units. This is the solution to the volume. Very exciting question indeed. Thank you for sending it through. I hope you guys can see how you had to analyze this question and work on it. Okay.